All right. Ah. Uh, now, uh, uh, what are you gonna do? Uh, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Oh, oh no. Okay. No. Yeah. No. This this spray is not for me. And so, by removing Earth from the motionless center of the universe, these masons have moved us physically and metaphysically from a place of supreme importance to one of complete nihilistic indifference. A large part of Eric Dubé's argument is that the flat Earth is the most important thing in your life. This isn't just a conversation about the planet, but about your very soul. As you will see, stakes are very important to a conspiracy theory. Hey, wait! If I don't finish this last bite, you don't get my soul, do you? If the Earth is the center of the universe, then the ideas of God, creation, and a purpose for human existence are resplendent. But if the Earth is just one of billions of planets revolving around billions of stars and billions of galaxies, then the ideas of God, creation, and a specific purpose for Earth and human existence become highly implausible. See what I mean by stakes? Apparently, there is no, and can be no, God on a globe. Oh, and apparently NASA promotes nihilism. Nope. It's airtight. So by surreptitiously indoctrinating us into their scientific materialist sun worship, not only do we lose faith in anything beyond the material, we gain absolute faith in materiality, superficiality, status, selfishness, hedonism, and consumerism. I hereby turn over to Ism Incorporated everything I have, including my freedom, and the freedom of my children. If there's no God and everyone's just an accident, then all that really matters is me, me, me. <laughs> so they've turned Madonna, the mother of God, into a, the material girl living in a material world. Because we are living in a material world, and I am a material girl. Their rich, powerful corporations with their slick sun cult logos sell us idols to worship, slowly taking over the world while we tacitly believe their science, vote for their politicians, buy their products, listen to their music, watch their movies, all sacrificing our souls at the altar of materialism. <laughs> and now you know why the Rothschild bankers paid Masonic Jew lizards like Aristotle to say the world wasn't flat. So we could have malls! Yay! Touche, my man. <laughs> it's, it's a big, it's a big deception. I'd say it's the the biggest cover up and conspiracy in history. We've been completely deluded for 500 years. Not everybody, but nowadays it's it's pretty it's pretty well advanced. Yeah. Most most of the flat Earth material you'll find still in existence is from the 1800s, and there was there was quite a debate going on then. So there's still quite a few people unconvinced of the ball spinning ball theory back then. But Eric phrases quite a few people to give the impression that there was a real debate about the flat Earth at the turn of the 20th century. There are dozens of us. Dozens! This is not true. It was a niche conspiracy then, just as it is a niche conspiracy now. Personally, I find it very telling that Flat Earth research has barely advanced in 100 plus years. The majority of modern Flat Earth literature comprises nothing more than parodying factoids from their turn of the century pamphlets. Well help yourself to a fucking science book cause you're talking like a fucking retard. Nowadays with NASA and all the, the photo and videos that they give us, uh, people don't really look at too much further for evidence as they assume that that's all real. It's a fake. Right, obviously it is a huge can of worms and there's so many things, so many arguments. People say, well, what about, you know, the planets? Are the, the planets are all fake? Yeah, there's a lot of things that our science has told us that are built off of the heliocentric model that they've given us. Planets are not an invention of heliocentrism. They have been known about for quite a while. You think someone that defends the geocentric model would at least know the geocentric model. But maybe I'm asking too much. And I think that if there's any unanswered questions by the time we're done here, if people go online and take their question and they look it up on either the comment section of your website, or I was, I was very surprised to see how many people really are questioning the heliocentric model online. I thought it would be far less, but there are dozens of us. Dozens. If you take the question you may have and you uh, ask it to the the so-called experts on the idea, they will have an answer for you. Um, and I guess I would say 
challenge yourself to try to stump one. Challenge yourself to try to come up with something that they can't explain and then say it's bullshit. But until then, maybe you should uh, keep an open mind. <coughs> and before we do go too far into it, give us a clear mental picture, if you can, of what you consider the true model of the Earth and the cosmos and this whole thing to be, because obviously we're calling in the question that there, there are not billions of stars, there are not a bunch of planets in the solar system orbiting the sun. That's a huge ball of wax. So what is this reality? How is it structured? <laughs> so if you look up at the sky with, with your eyes or with a telescope, you can't tell the difference between a star and a planet. The planets were always known as wandering stars, and the regular stars as fixed stars for thousands of years. So ancient civilizations could tell the difference between stars and planets. In fact, Galileo was able to see Jupiter as a planet well enough to discover it has moons. You can see the rings of Saturn from a telescope bought at Walmart. It's actually quite easy to distinguish planets from stars. Uh, nowadays, they claim that planets are Earth-like spherical terra firma that you can walk on out, up there in outer space. But as far as you can tell through any telescope that we have, it's just a round dot of light up there in the sky. Just a reminder before we continue, Eric Dubay is the top guy of the Flat Earth Movement. Boss. Head man, top dog, big cheese, a head honcho. Captain, number look at this. All the planets and all the stars, none of them can be confirmed to be some sort of terra firma that you could land on. Though in their pictures from their fake telescopes, they clearly look like big ball planets that you could definitely land on as they show you with Mars and whatnot, but that can't be conf confirmed again with your own eyes or with a telescope that you could buy with anything that we can see, the sun, moon, stars, and planets are all just lights in the sky revolving around us. They claim that we revolve around the sun and the moon revolves around us and the stars are actually distant suns trillions upon trillions of miles away. Now, this wasn't always that way. They've actually been reverse engineering these explanations as they go along. Say what? Because geocentric flat earthers throughout the centuries have come up with good objections, such as Tycho Brahe's objection that if the earth is a ball spinning around the sun, in six months' time, we should be 200 million miles on the other side of the sun. So the parallax perspective, when you look through a telescope uh, in your backyard, you can prove this, you should see some difference in the stars after 200 million miles of supposed orbit. Uh, but you can't see any whatsoever, so... Frederick Bessel first measured parallax in 1883, and astronomers have been measuring it ever since. Remember, top guy. Boss, head man, top dog. What people of what uh, heliocentrists have been saying since then is that the stars are actually the, the nearest star is 25 trillion miles away, 4.2 light years. They came up with a sci-fi term to make it seem plausible. Whoa, sci-fi! It's light years away, it's so far away that even after 200 million miles, you can't see an inch of difference in your backyard through a telescope after six months of supposed orbital motion. Let me get this straight. Tycho Brahe's predicts that there would be observable parallax in stars, and it is discovered to be true 300 years later. But since the parallax calculations say the stars are a great distance away, then it's a reverse engineered explanation and is therefore not true? Does not compute. Does not compute. Um, the reason that they say the ball Earth is tilted on its vertical axis 23.5 degrees is because you can see Polaris, the North Pole star, 
all the way to 23.5 degrees south latitude. This is just false. You cannot see Polaris in the southern hemisphere, and Polaris has nothing to do with measuring tilt. The tilt of the Earth was measured in antiquity using the shadows of vertical columns measured at high noon. It's getting really difficult to tell when Eric is too stupid to know better and when Eric is just flat out lying. And if the Earth was a ball, you couldn't see that because you'd be staring through the ball to look up at that star. A little too ironic. Um, you can see it on the because the Earth is flat, of course, uh, but you can't see all the stars in at any one place from the Earth because of the law of perspective. I, I'm really happy for you. I'm let you finish. But there is no law of perspective. That's why the sun seems to rise and fall in the the sky every day as well. But it's actually not rising or falling anywhere. The sun and the moon maintain their altitude, and they revolve circles around the flat Earth. First of all. The sun changes height and location slightly every day over the course of the year, being highest at the summer solstice and lowest at the winter solstice. The sun does not maintain its altitude. Secondly, what does this have to do with stars in the sky? How would perspective apply to looking up at the night sky? Also, don't telescopes kind of ruin this concept? Is it one of the big flat earth proofs that you can see ships over the horizon if you zoom in? If you lose sight due to perspective, but gain it from a telescope, doesn't that negate the perspective problem? What am I missing here? Still on those meds, huh? Uh, yeah, they, uh, they helped me to, um, uh, think. So we're, we're, we're stationary. The sun and the moon are actually the same size just as they appear. There's another lie. They claim that the sun is 400 times bigger and 400 times further away than the moon. Uh, and that's, that's why they just appear the same size from our perspective, but they're not. But I mean, again, with your own eyes, you can see when they eclipse, they are the same size. And the fact that they do eclipse is not quite a coincidence. Top 10 most remarkable coincidences in history. To happen on a Big Bang accident universe, uh, that everything is just spinning around in space randomly. How come there's these two brilliant lights in the sky that pass each other and they're perfectly opposite? We on Earth are lucky enough to have the sun and moon be proportionally similar enough to give a rare total eclipse. But since we can't have nice things, Eric decries this as impossible, and therefore is evidence of a flat Earth. This is why we can't have nice things, Barry! Do you know the, the sun's light is very different than the moon's light too? They claim the moon, the moon's light comes from the sun, it's reflected off of the sun. But if you collect the moon's light, it's actually cold. Whereas if you collect sunlight, of course, it's hot and you can burn things. The sunlight will preserve uh, certain things, dry out meat, meats and things to eat. But if you leave meats out in the moonlight, they spoil. I don't believe you. Um, if you're in the, the shade in the sunlight, the shade is obviously the temperature is going to be less. But if you're in the shade in the moonlight, the temperature is more. The moonlight is cold. I've never noticed that. I would say a broke clock is right twice a day. That old proverb just doesn't quite fit here. Moonlight having a cooling effect is a common argument hauled out by flat earthers. And honestly, I have no idea how it connects to the flat earth. That being said, this one I cannot bust. While some YouTube science in this is pure crap, some of it isn't half bad. Perhaps this moonlight shade question will gain steam and a proper controlled experiment will take place on the subject. I'll reserve my judgment until then. You trusted me. I love you. I'm gonna try that out. Yeah, the combustion in a bonfire is increased by moonlight and it's decreased by sunlight. There's another one. Give them an inch and they take a mile. Damn it. This bonfire line is from Zetetic Astronomy and is completely unverified and dismissed just as easily. So there's a lot of things that prove that the sun and the moon are actually their own lights. Uh, they're not, the, the moon is not 
a big ball up there in space that you can land masons on, as they claim. It's just a light, a, a flat, round disk. Fun fact, the moon does wobble ever so slightly due to its eccentric orbit and axis of rotation. This allows astronomers to see up to 59% of the moon's surface as it orbits the Earth. Pretty sure a flat disk light won't do that. And you can even see through the moon during waxing and waning cycles. The Royal uh, Astronomical Society, even the, the people who are uh, part of this manipulation, they've recorded several times that you can see stars and planets through the moon. The Royal Astronomical Society does have a letter about a person seeing a light on the moon for about five minutes in 1794. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think stars pop out of existence after five minutes. Perhaps you're making a mountain out of a molehill here. And the, the astronomers that are seeing it, they're always flabbergasted about how this is possible. But it's because the moon is not physical, it's not densely physical in the way that they claim. It's just a light, mm -hmm. uh, so you can see through it. If this is true, why are these sightings such a rare occurrence? One professional astronomer in 1794 a small handful of flat earthers on the internet have supposedly seen this. Did the mason in charge of the moon forget to turn on the moon's opaqueness one day? Uh, just like the planets, the planets as well are just lights. That's, that's why Pluto's not a planet anymore, because the, the light from it just rapidly diminished one day, and they couldn't continue fooling all the amateur astronomers that Pluto's a planet, because the starlight from it just <laughs> diminished by 50%. <laughs> Of course Pluto's a planet, son. I learned that in the third grade. Well, yeah, but, you know, they changed it. Morty, nobody changed the planets. I, ju I just Googled it. Uh, Pluto's not a planet. They changed it in 2006. I have no clue where Eric is getting his information. This is a lie. The light from Pluto has not diminished and had no bearing on its reclassification. 